This video is going to make you understand something very, very differently. If it doesn't, by the end of it, circle back to me and let me know. So sick of the amount of people on the internet spreading dangerous disinformation. I understand that a lot of people are just advocating for Palestine right now and nothing more, and that is exactly what you should be doing, so please carry on. But you also have to understand that whether you're seeing it or not, there are people who are literally just creating content that is anti-Semitic, that benefits nobody. These content creators have hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of views, and all they're doing is explaining why Israel is a white supremacist, colonial state. Because the Western media is extremely white supremacist, and that is how racism works. Israelis get to be white, Palestinians are non-white. Israelis are white and the Palestinians are what? So I'm Israeli and my family is originally from Iraq. They had to flee from the country because the Iraqi government wouldn't let them walk, took their money, and threatened to execute them. Do you know how many Jews there were in Iraq in 1948? 135,000. But today, there are less than 10 Jews there. And the same thing happened to the Jewish communities in all Arab countries. Doesn't sound so white to me. So maybe it is not the media that is racist. Or the Israelis. Maybe just... You. When your advocacy involves uplifting one group of people and tearing another group of people down, that's when you know something is going wrong. You don't have to deny Jewish history in order to support the Palestinian movement. The word colonization means to settle among and establish control over indigenous people in an area. The Jewish account of history is that the Jews and previously the Canaanites lived on the land for 2,500 years before the Muslim conquest in the 7th century, where the land was Arabized and Islamized from Arabs that came from the Arabian Peninsula. The Arabic account is that Arabs also lived on the land before the 7th century. Doesn't matter because whichever way you slice it, Jewish people were either the first ones there or amongst the first ones there, which satisfies the definition of indigenous. And for those who get their history from religious texts, there is no archaeological evidence that Abraham ever existed. That was a very long time ago and the Jews and the Arabs of that time were converting and intermixing with each other and basically share the same DNA and are basically the same people. So we all agree that they both are indigenous to the land and they both have entitlement to the land. The point is that the word colonization is not only ahistorical and factually inaccurate, but it is a form of erasure. And it is erasure that is just entirely unnecessary to make the points that you're trying to make about Palestine today. Those points still stand without having to erase Jewish identity and history. Now you're going to tell me, OK, fine, they're not colonizers, but they are settlers. Does anybody want to talk about why they had to return to the land? Anybody? Beginning around the 1200s, OK, so almost 800, 1000 years ago, that's when the Jewish migration back to Palestine began. They started being ethnically cleansed out of Europe. They were ethnically cleansed out of England. They were ethnically cleansed out of France. They were ethnically cleansed out of Spain. They were ethnically cleansed from Spain to Morocco. They were ethnically cleansed from Morocco to Egypt. They were ethnically cleansed from Egypt back to Palestine. Then, of course, they were ethnically cleansed out of Central Europe. They were ethnically cleansed out of Russia. 2.5 million Jews killed in Russia. Cleansed out of Germany, Poland. Oh, you thought the ethnic cleansing was just happening in Europe? No. 850,000 Jews were ethnically cleansed out of the Middle East and North Africa, leaving only about 4,000 today. Morocco, 265,000 Jews ethnically cleansed. Algeria, 140,000 Jews ethnically cleansed, zero remaining. Tunisia, 105,000 Jews ethnically cleansed. Libya, 38,000 Jews ethnically cleansed, zero remaining. Egypt, 75,000 Jews ethnically cleansed, five remaining. Syria, 30,000 Jews ethnically cleansed, 22 remaining. Iraq, 135,000 Jews ethnically cleansed, less than 10 remaining. Yemen, 63,000 Jews, less than 200 remaining. 30,000 Jews airlifted out of Arag. Before returning to Palestine, here's a list of all the countries that they were ethnically cleansed out of. Judea, Assyria, Samaria, Rome, Egypt, Alexandria, Menorca, Mainz, France, Naples, England, Hungary, Switzerland, Bavaria, Passau, Sicily, Nuremberg, Austria, Yemen, Haiti, Russia, Germany, Poland, Florence, Egypt, Iraq, Algeria, Libya, Uganda, Tunisia, Syria. Where is it that you expected them to go? Then the next thing you say is that, OK, well, fine, I guess they could settle on the land, but that doesn't mean that they could just start taking. During the most recent waves of migration over the past 100 years since the fall of the Ottoman Empire, which was in 1917, Palestine was sparsely populated. You During that time, there was approximately like 250,000 people during the Ottoman Empire. By the end of it, maybe 500,000 people. Approximately 10 to 15 percent of them were Jews, the rest were Muslims and Christians. Today, there are about 7 million Arabs and 7 million Jews, 2 million Arabs living in Israel. So how do we get to being so sparsely populated, no more than about 500,000 people over 100 years, to having 14 million people on the land? You're scratching your head because it never occurred to you that over the past 100 years, there's also been millions of Arabs settling from neighboring Arab regions, such as 
Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, Syria. A land that only just had 500,000 people on it sounds like there was a lot of room, right? And there was, but once the Jewish settlements started happening, there was a lot of violence because people did not want Jews settling on the land. Beginning from 1920, this is the list of massacres that were happening in Palestine, and it shows who the perpetrators were. A lot of it started with Arab resistance to Jews migrating onto the land. But as you can see, eventually a lot of Jewish militants became perpetrators too. There was a lot of conflict between them, and so then it was proposed that there should be a two-state solution. Don't forget that this land didn't belong to anybody because it was subject to so many conquests until the end of the Ottoman Empire, which was 1917. That was the first time that anybody had a Palestinian passport. In 1948, when Israel became a state, that was the first time that anybody had an Israeli passport. There's just 30 years difference between them. But the two-state solution was necessary because they couldn't get along. It was rejected by Palestinian leadership, and in 1948, Israel officially declared itself a state. The very next day, the neighboring Arab regions declared war against Israel. These are the same Arab regions that had just ethnically cleansed them out of their land. Israel won the war and that is what led to the displacement of 750,000 Palestinians known to the Palestinian community as the Nakba and known to the Israeli community as the War of Independence. That all happened because of the neighboring Arab regions wanting to ethnically cleanse all the Jews off of the land. After Israel won the war, that is when things started getting unequal. That is when the land expansions happened. That is when the displacements happened. That is what has led to what we are witnessing today. So yes, you absolutely should be advocating for free Palestine, as many of us have done for the past 10 plus years. But your advocacy should be centered around actually freeing Palestine and not denying the right of Jewish people to just exist. <laughs> I'm fine with that.